Actually, the first summer that I spent working with a, a colleague I work on, Isle Royal, on the Wolf Moose Project, and the first summer I was there, which was five summers ago, um, the day that I had arrived, my colleague had just listened to a, an NPR interview with Jared Diamond, and so he had spent 53 minutes of the 55-minute interview sort of describing not only collapse, but the fact that all of the conditions for these other cultures were actually applying to our culture, um, and really had painted this depressing scenario. And then I think it was Bob Woodward at the end said, you know, but do you have hope? And uh, Jared Diamond said, without hesitating, without flinching, said, well, of course I do, because, you know, unexpected things happen, and so there's always hope. And I, I think what happened is when, I, when, when my colleague told me this, I had to, f I had to fight my, uh, my vomit reflex a little bit. Uh, and, but the thing is, that what I realized is that I, I bet I had said things that are similar to this, right? You paint this kind of doomsday scenario, and then it seems, which seemed to be, seems to be a very legitimate scenario. I mean, it's a convincing story, and it's also how we think we've motivated people in the past and then we catch ourselves and we think, oh, you can't just give them this depressing story. And so as the, as the solution in the last moment, we give them hope. And if you lead people to the point of depression, which is so much of what we do in environmental discourse, that doesn't motivate them at the end of the day. That makes them you know, roll up in the fetal position and weep. Um, but just saying you should be hopeful doesn't, especially when you've sort of convinced them that you there's no reason to be hopeful, that's an inappropriate mo motivator as well. So if we're left with despair or hope, neither of which actually seem to be a motivator to, to do anything, um, we need another motivator. We need, we need to focus on something else. So we started thinking that, you know, this is really about, about doing the right thing, quite apart from what, you know, whether it's hopeful or not, that this is about the decision to be a certain kind of person. Are you going to be a caring person, a sharing person, and not, you know, you know, damn the future, it doesn't really matter what, if it's a hopeful or situation or not, that you, you have this kind of obligation quite apart from the consequences of whatever, whatever you go about doing. And so we thought that that was more empowering because it can't, be, it, it can't be taken away. You can't play with me. You can't tell me stories about the future is hopeful, the future is not hopeful. If I've decided that I have an obligation and I'm going to do the right thing, you, you really, it's harder to, for you to mess with me. And we thought that that would be a more... Um, powerful motivation. Yeah, I think, I mean, in, the, in, in recent history, now if you go back far enough in history, this is different, but in recent history, we've really been, especially I suppose maybe in North America and to a certain extent in the West in general, the, the one kind of moral theory that's really dominated is, is consequentialism or utilitarianism, that, you know, which is very future-oriented. We ought to be maximizing utility. It's always about this future, and this is, it seems to me that's where this hope, despair, um, focus lies. It's all about the consequences of our action. But if you go back far enough in, in history, you go back to Aristotle, for instance, that's not why Aristotle thought we should be motivated. He thought that what we should really be doing is cultivating within people virtues. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave a talk a little while ago, um, and I described a colleague who wrote about the concept of wilderness and received a death threat for it. And I, I joked, which is not really a joke, but it's kind of a joke, that the, the goal of all good writing is to write death threat worthy <laughs> stuff. Um, and I mean, you know, it's not to be provocative just for some sort of perverse sake. It's that, you know, you really, you know, I really think there's something problematic here. And, and you know, if it's something that we don't reflect on, yeah, you, it's going to be provocative.